Uh-oh. It's a big blue box. Benchmade. Hmm. Must be knife review time on the Apostle P channel. What do we have here, guys? 470 Osborne Emissary. Stay tuned. This is going to be interesting. gang rob here it is the evening of 21 december 2013 just a little over three days until christmas morning and it's time for a knife review and yes tonight's subject is the benchmade 470 emissary comes in the customary benchmade blue class packaging slip box with soft foam lining beautiful little microfiber baggie with a drawstring and inside we find the knife and yes if you're familiar with the 470 and its progression over time you'll recognize this as an early model with the gray hard anodized coating current models are black and it is a benchmade and it is an axis lock bench made. Oh, did you see that? It's a spring assisted axis lock bench made. <clears throat> yes, it has the axis assist. Before I get into the pertinent details of this knife, let's go over some specifications. We have a blade, a three inch drop point blade with a gorgeous swedge on top look how thinly ground point zero nine zero inches thick that's ninety thousandths for you viewers in your belinda a satin finished and then lightly stone washed blade of crucible cpm s30v blade steel have the bench made butterfly on the show side if you're a righty <clears throat> and the Osborne logo on the off side yes we do have a 6061 T6 aluminum handle hard anodized in gray looks almost like sandblasted titanium doesn't it <clears throat> but it's not it's actually a coating very similar to the green coating on the Benchmade 940. There are going to be some other things that are kind of similar to the 940 as we go along. <clears throat> yes, the mechanism is Benchmade's Axis Lock, but with Axis Assist. Now, the Axis Assist on the Benchmade's is a little different than like the torsion bar mechanism you'll find in Kershaw or ZT knives or even... Uh, the SOG assisted opening knives like the Flash series and the Aegis. If you notice, I'll try to do this for you without cutting myself. On these bench maids, <clears throat> the distance the blade has to travel out of the handle is pretty short. I mean, right there, and it's. it's. away. <clears throat> And there is no slack in the mechanism uh, at the end of its travel either. There is that blade's under spring tension almost all the way to the stop pin. In fact, really, it is all the way to the stop pin. The reason I spend some time on that is uh, to let you know that this knife behaves much more like an auto knife. Than it does an assisted knife it's extremely fast 
But let's continue with our dimensional discussion. The thickness of the handle, a mere 0.45 inches, under half an inch. Uh, along with that 3 inch blade is a handle length of 3.9 inches for an overall length of 6.9 inches. And a weight, <clears throat> they vary svelte, 2.2 ounces. Pocket clip is a deep carry, very handsome, uh, sort of stonewashed, almost polished, deep carry clip. And it's a pretty effective clip. Plenty strong in retention to hold a knife of this tiny little weight. It does carry deeply in the pocket. The knife basically disappears. You have about an eighth of an inch of knife sticking up when it's in your pocket. All that is really good and the, the knife is easily accessible. Uh, the tip of your finger just sort of goes into this detent in the pocket clip. Plenty of, plenty of grip on that anodized coating for your thumb. The knife extracts very easily. There is a problem with this clip though. Let's see if you can identify it. I'm going to come in close. See any problems there? I do. The clip stock is very thick. And although it is left to right hand reversible, I'm going to show you the other side to reveal that there is no milled recess in the aluminum handle for that clip. So you're, as you enter the pocket and uh, the fabric of your pants pocket tries to slide up all the way to the end of that clip, it's going to encounter some difficulty. You've got the stock thickness and then two button head screws. And I've had this in and out of my pocket several times preparing for this review. And by the way, this is not my knife. It belongs to a sharpening customer and a YouTube viewer, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, thanks for letting me have this knife for a couple extra days to do this review. But the deep carry is a great idea. However, uh, you'll fuss with it a little bit with both hands to get your pants material all the way to the end of that clip. Not a great design. They could have... Uh, they could have used flathead countersunk screws and milled a little slot or a, uh, a little pocket for that clip to sit in so that wouldn't be an issue. They didn't do that. Uh, okay. Everybody's familiar, aren't we, with the access lock mechanism? It uh, is slid rearward to release the lock once the knife has been deployed. Via an Omega spring on either side, the lock engages when the blade tang clears the lock bar and gives us pretty solid lockup. Although, because of the assist mechanism, there is a little bit of play. Hard to tell if it's, it is actually vertical play, and I think it's not so much in the lock itself as the way the mechanism is mounted in the handle. <clears throat> Again, Kind of similar in that regard to most auto knives. There's a lot going on in that pivot. Play generally comes standard, and it does in this knife. As I got it before it uh, came to the sharpening bench and got a little spot treatment, there was a lot more side-to-side -side play. In fact, pure side-to-side -side play is virtually gone. It is gone after I put it back together. <clears throat> without, as you can tell, inhibiting the speed of this knife whatsoever. Now this little mechanism right here on the uh, left side of the blade is the safety. <clears throat> if that switch is moved to the up position, you'll not be deploying the knife. Pull it down, ready to rock, and it also works in the open position. I cannot release the access lock if that safety is engaged either. I can move the blade, but I can't close it. <clears throat> so what would you use a cute little assisted knife like this for? Well, I guess it's tailor-made to be sort of a high-end carry knife or a a tactical gentleman's folder, perhaps. Uh, something that you might wear on special occasions. Something that you might uh, oh, maybe want to pull out and kind of show off in a crowd of dudes who appreciate such things. 
because it is pretty cool. It's also very well made. Fit and finish are just impeccable. Uh, the blade grinds are impeccable, just gorgeous. Blade is ground pretty thin. Of course, it starts pretty thin at only 90 thousandths. <clears throat> Excuse me. I sort of envision this knife as kind of a pure slicer. It's uh, almost spear ground, sort of saber ground, essentially flat ground from about, oh, what, three-fourths of the breadth of the blade. Starts out at 90 thousandths here, comes down to, I'm guessing, 15 to 20 thousandths behind the edge. Not bad at all. Wicked little slicer with just enough belly for your EDC food preparation tasks without wearing your tip out. Pretty beefy stop pin for such a light blade. Of course, needs to be that way because of that big old spring in there slinging that blade against the stop pin. Not sure why they changed to black coating on later models of this knife. I think it's much more attractive in the gray. It does definitely resemble titanium. So with the gray coating, this knife's got to be, in a manual you might want to weigh in in the comments, got to be over a year old, doesn't it? And obviously lovingly cared for. <clears throat> so other than sort of a high-end EDC blade, why would you own such a knife? Especially when you, <clears throat> when you consider its price tag. Not small, guys. Uh, you can score these knives between $150 and $175 if you look for a deal. But that's kind of a lot of money, isn't it? Uh, when you consider even some of its own in-house competition. Let's look at it against the Benchmade 940, shall we? Let's kind of line them up here so you can see what we're looking at. I'm going to put them down so the butts of the knives are pretty equal. <clears throat> Obviously, you can see that the 940 has a longer handle and a longer blade, almost three and a half inches, three and seven sixteenths versus three. Cutting edge, well, about the same difference, you know, the, the 940 is 7 sixteenths of an inch longer. <clears throat> Blade stock on the 940, and by the way, both these knives are Osborne designed. Uh, 120 thousandths on the 940 and 90 thousandths on the Emissary. 2.2 ounces, 2.9 ounces. Uh, pretty negligible difference there. I would say... Carryability, although this is a smaller knife, I don't know that it's any more carryable than a 940. Well, wait a minute. This is the assisted knife. It, it must be faster, mustn't it? Well, let's just take a look at that. Now, assuming we have remembered to disengage the lock, let's just fire both these guys at the same time. Assisted knife, unassisted knife. Let's see what happens. And now let's close them. Let's do that again. Okay. Hmm. So which one's faster? Exactly. So for function and utility, let's face it, that's not why you buy this knife. <clears throat> you don't buy this knife because it costs the same amount of money and has more function and utility than a Benchmade 940. You buy it because uh, it's cool, I guess, don't you? You know, nothing fancy, our old buddy, he talks about first kind of cool and second kind of cool. Well, in first kind of cool, let's face it. This is a more capable knife made out of the same materials. But in second kind of cool, you, know, you just touch that thumb stud 
and out it comes. You can hand this to a buddy of yours and say, hey, check out this knife, see how fast it is, and he'll put it in his hand, and he'll go, if he doesn't drop it, bang, oh, there it goes. <clears throat> it's one of those, you know, impress your friends kind of knives, feel good about carrying it because it's kind of special. And it is so well made. But I have to tell you guys, uh, for me, and uh, I understand there are reasons that guys want to buy a knife like this. But for me, there are reasons why I wouldn't. And I'm not sure my lighting is going to pick this up for you guys, but I'm going to try to come in close. It's got some vulnerability. You know, you've got the, not only the complication of the assist mechanism, which definitely reduces the side-to-side -side stability of plain phosphor bronze washers against plain aluminum and plain steel. We've got smaller washers and tiny springs and things going on. And then I'm going to try to get this for you. Can you see the fully exposed Omega springs inside the knife? You know, I don't know what debris is going to hook onto those and impede their action. Now, obviously, we're not talking about a hard-use utility knife here. We're talking about really sort of a gents folder that's going to be used to open mail and maybe cut your sandwich or uh, do gentlemanly things with and maintain well and, and take good care of. It's, it's a dress knife, maybe a Maybe a Sunday go to meeting blade. But, you know, if Sunday go to meeting went bad and you had a bad guy that you needed to dispatch, I think it might do that too. I like the name, you know, Emissary. Those of you who are in the military or have been connected to foreign service or anything like that, you know our, our embassies and diplomatic corps are Oh, in some ways, mere fronts for our espionage troops. Kind of an interesting name, isn't it? An emissary. You know, you think of that as a diplomat, someone who helps keep the peace by clever negotiation. Well, that guy might also be a security-cleared assassin, mightn't he? He might use a knife like this, you know, at a dinner party against a bad guy. And I think in capable hands it's fully capable of that task as well, especially if the bad guy doesn't see it coming. You know, what we haven't talked about is ergonomics. And yeah, it has good ergonomics in that reverse grip for that task I was just talking about. Really it kind of buries in the hand nicely. Good and secure grip. Can't really see it, but my pinky is buried against that little finger choil nicely. Thumb wraps over the butt effectively. But what about those EDC tasks? Well, in a standard saber grip, pretty nice. The pinky is sort of hanging, hanging out, serving as an anchor, as in with many you know, three-inch class knives. If I come forward, though, into this sort of side grip, my index finger can wrap against the front of the choil without contacting the cutting edge. My thumb can lie on the bolster area, even over over under the blade if I need it to, to choke up for fine tasks. I can even you know stay in the saber grip and come forward on the knife real comfortably. In a hammer grip, which probably isn't going to be the most common grip used on this knife, not bad. How about in the draw cut grip? Really exceptionally comfortable. I can I can feel that clip, but it's not annoying. You know, we do have a super strong strength to weight ratio on these aluminum handled bench maids. Uh, there's virtually no flex. I mean, no flex in that handle. And it's pretty thin up here at the uh, at the finger groove area, but it doesn't seem to make it the least bit weak. I guess, you know, here's my sort of overall <clears throat> appraisal of this knife. And by the way, let's check my work. Emmanuel, you're going to want to see this. Let's, let's see if this uh, thinly ground little Honka S30V by Benchmade can cut after it has been 
to the Apostle P sharpening bench. Yeah. Quite nicely. Ooh. That's what that thinness gets you guys. Nicely done. Well done, bench made. But to continue, uh, this is a knife I think you buy not because of its utility so much. You buy it because of its second kind of cool. Because of its really slickly operating assisted opening mechanism. Uh, and because of its dressy good looks, its, uh, its contours, its attractive finish, its bright polished hardware. And you know, I did a, a sort of a comparison against a manual access knife that's similar in construction, but I think the comparison really isn't against the manual knife. I don't think it's really against other assisted knives. I think this knife is cool because it really operates, it feels and acts much more like an auto knife without being one. So it's completely legal in many, many areas where auto knives would not be. I mean, it's way better than most assisted knives getting it out. Way better. The effort it takes on that thumb stud versus pressing a button on an auto, it's almost identical. Uh, I mean... Let's see how far that thumb stud actually has. Well, let's not focus on the tip of the blade. Let's focus on the thumb stud. How much does it have to move before that blade lets go? Not very much, does it? You know, is this as fast as a, a mini Infidel? I bet it is. Just as light. Pretty cool little blade shape. Really kind of a uh, reminiscent blade shape to some of the small uh, Protec knives and, uh, oh gosh, the Piranha knives. That super thin, you know, stick it between the ribs <laughs> kind of blade thickness. I sort of like it, you know. Do I like it as a as a utility knife for EDC tasks as much as I like my 940? No, I don't. You know, would I spend 175 bucks for it? Mm, boy, I'd rather see it at 125. Because uh, I think comparing to this knife for 150 ish, 150 to 170, this probably should be priced a little lower than the 940, just in my opinion, but. You know, if one shows up in my stocking this year for Christmas, I'm probably not selling it. I did want to get a review out on this knife, though, because it seems like the few that I have audited or uh, the few reviews that I've reviewed on this knife don't really do it justice. Um... There are, I don't know, there some kind of misinformation out there about the coating, uh, misinformation about the blade steel. By now, though, I think we know a lot about CPM S30V. Uh, you know, it's a it's a powdered metal, powdered metal, stainless steel, alloy steel. Um, the micro ingots in the CPM technology give a very homogeneous grain structure, very fine grain structure. The chemical makeup of S30V with 14% chromium, tons of carbon, over 1.5%, and, and then 4% uh, of vanadium um, make it a pretty cool steel. Uh, the chromium in this knife steel is not totally dedicated or overly dedicated to making chromium carbides to make the steel hard. Uh, they're free to serve in the corrosion protection function while the vanadium in the steel combines with carbon to make vanadium, carb vanadium carbides, which are kind of bigger and more durable than chromium carbides anyway. <clears throat> that grain structure when this steel is heat treated and tempered gives you something kind of magical. You know, S30V is very wear resistant. It doesn't like to be sharpened. 
doesn't like to come to a super keen edge off the stone and the strop, but I've found uh, over the years that after you use it in abrasive media like cardboard, um, it starts to expose tooth. So if you get it sharp and it doesn't seem real sharp or <clears throat> you're concerned whether it is, go cut up a box with it and strop it again and then test it on some paper. Uh, it's probably going to be sharper than it was when you got it off the strop the first time. There's a reason S30V is S30V. It doesn't, doesn't take an edge like uh, D2 or 1095 or uh, even ZDP, but the edge kind of develops over use and then it holds on to a pretty viciously sharp working edge for a very long time. Great steel, but a little too common uh, to be $175 for a 3 inch version of it, 90 thousandths thick. But if, you, if you're watching this video and you like the lines and the performance and the noises that it makes and the beauty of its finishes and you got $175 or so to spend, you could do worse. That's all we've got for tonight, my friends. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the Word and Emmanuel's emissary are sharp. <laughs>